everyone and welcome to Turquoise Bay Studios. Yvette here. I'm so excited to share this video with you today. Um, the other day while I was having a lunch with my daughter, um, the lunch came in paper bags. And as you may know by the title of this video at this point, we will be talking about how to make envelopes out of plain and simple paper bags, paper lunch bags. Um, it could be of any size. It could actually be um, one of those big store uh, bags as well. And you can make a huge envelope out of that and then possibly make those envelopes into either inserts for your journals or a journal out of the envelopes. So um, really there is a huge amount of possibilities with this idea. So I came up, like I said, with this idea the other day and um, I did a small search on the internet. I didn't find anyone else that had this, but the internet is wide and vast. So I don't know if someone else came up with it, then kudos to you. But this is, um, like I said, what I came up with while I was fiddling around with this bag. Um, actually, I'm gonna share a personal story. I was kind of anxious that day and um, I just started playing with the paper bag, which quite annoyed my daughter because I was making all of the crinkly noises. But in any case, that's besides the point. That's how I came up with this. I just thought it was um, something um, that I'd want to share with you. But um, yeah, this is what the envelope will end up looking like out of just the crude paper bag, right? And um, this can actually be adapted to any paper bag, I think, or even um, a shopper bag. You can remove the, um, the the handles from it and use that, or even like a, um, a grocery bag, you know, a, a, a paper grocery bag. I'm sure that you can make a large envelope and make a huge book um, out of it or just an envelope. So, this is what it looks like. So you have, of course, everybody knows what a lunch bag looks like. And this is what just a regular size lunch bag. I have one in a brown paper bag and a white paper bag. So it's really up to you what kind of paper bag you're gonna use. As you can see, this is quite wrinkly. Um, some paper bags may be a dud, but these come, they're super cheap. You can even get this like at a dollar store or what is it a dollar and a quarter store now and um or you can get it you know any any store really should have a paper um lunch sack for you um these are kind of like those party bags that you would find at um michael's or hobby lobby uh you find this in the in the um party section and these are considered um extra large lunch bags and um, like I said, any size lunch bag will work. Um, this is out of a regular lunch bag. And out of this lunch bag, um, this would be the size that you would get. And let me give you that. The finished size of your envelope will be eight and a quarter inches by, so that's eight and a quarter this way. And then we're gonna measure here by, let me see three and three quarters this way. So, and um, they're super versatile and I'll show you some examples later of the two different ways that you can use this. Um, uh, you can, you know, use it like this as a um, conventional envelope or like this. And I'll show you examples of what I've made in a little bit here. But without any further ado, let me go ahead and show you how easy you can put these together. Now I do have to share that each bag, like this one, is pretty sturdy and it's made out of thicker paper. So the thinner the paper, you run into some of them being kind of wrinkly and those might turn out to be duds and that's not the end of the world. If it does turn out to be a dud, I have ideas that you can use with the actual paper so, so not to throw this in the landfill, right? So. And these are your brown paper bags. And as you can see, it's kind of wrinkly here. That might not work for us, but we'll, let me show you what you will need. So you'll need a paper bag. And then you're going to maybe need a pencil to measure later. Any pencil will do. Um, it would be nice to have some kind of a bone folder. So any bone folder that you have will do. Now, I do have to say, 
that you will need something that has a point to it. Either like this one might or might not work. Um, these will definitely work. Now, if you don't have any of these things and you're just using your finger for this, that's fine. Um, you may need a skewer. It's a possibility depending on how finicky your bag is. If you don't have a skewer, a knitting needle with a point, anything that's pointy might help you with this or even a paintbrush. If you have any size paintbrush, as long as you can use the little pointy side or even a pencil, right? A pen or a pencil maybe. And I'll show you why in a, in a moment, why you may need these, okay? And I say may, because it all depends on the paper bag that you're using. So let me move this stuff to the side. So what you're gonna do is you're going to open your paper bag. And what you wanna do is once you open your paper bag, you have these creases that want to go in but in this case, we want them to come out, right? So here's an example of the envelope that I showed you earlier. So what you wanna do is kinda of put your hand in there and open your hand up. And oh, and you wanna work. So your bag has this crease here. So you wanna work with this crease going up, right? Towards the, towards the roof. Um, this side will remain on the on your surface and this crease side is the one that you want to bring up, okay? So you wanna put your hand in your bag and you wanna open your hand up as much as you can. Um, and then what we want to do is kind of flatten and as we're flattening, I'm working the bag so that I'm, tr I'm trying to open this and this area here will become this area here. So the bottom of the bag is going to become the inside flap of your envelope. Okay, so you wanna open it up as much as you can. And then you wanna kinda of come to the sides and then I'm kind of massaging the bag out so that this crease now is coming out this way. And you wanna lightly, at this point, you just wanna lightly crease it out. And you want to do the same with the other side. So you wanna lightly, I'm kind of pressing my nail against it, lightly press it out. You can use your bone folder to do that as well. You see, I wanna lightly press that out, okay? At this point, do you see how your bag wants to crease there and make funny, funny little creases? You want to make sure that you are trying to get as much as you can of these creases out and I'm just flattening my hand. I'm going to mirror my right hand with my left hand outside so you can see. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just pushing it out from the inside. And then see how here it wants to kind of crease on you? This is where you would take either your bone folder, a knitting needle, I'll give you examples. And you want to help the bag kind of massage the bag into doing what you want it to do, which is create. This is the hardest part, I promise. You wanna create your envelope flap. And right here, I'm just using my hand, so no tools necessary, just your hand. And again here, I'm just pushing it with my fingernail. And then we want to maneuver our bag this way. So the less crease you have here, the better. And I'll show you why in just a moment. And sometimes that is the best that you're going to get. And at this point, I might try one more time to massage this so that it's working for me, but it's not, right? So, and that's okay as long as we get this to work for us. So now you wanna take your bone folder and you wanna crease this line down. And the same with here. And it doesn't matter that it's not perfect. All of this is gonna get covered up, okay? And then here, this side, as you can see, worked out perfectly for us. Wanna make sure we're creasing that down. This side, not so much. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to make sure that my angles here are nice and press down. And then this one, it doesn't matter which way, 
just press it down and it'll be okay. And you're gonna have to live with that. And if you're a perfectionist, grab another bag and try it again. <laughs> um, so it's very, very simple. All you wanna do is now make sure that your bag is nicely creased down, okay? And this is what you end up with right here. So this is like the top of your bag, which will become the bottom, okay? So now you have your bag like this, and what you wanna do is fold your flap down. Do you see where I'm going with this? You wanna fold it down right around, maybe give it either super close or you can give it like an eighth of an inch here, but what you want it to do is fold so that you have this envelope top flap and you wanna crease. It's important to crease everything down and I'll show you why in just a moment. So everything is nice and creased and now you have your envelope flap, okay? So now what you want to do is, now you wanna create the inside of the envelope. So what you're going to do is, and every envelope is going to be different, so I can't really give you an exact measurement, but what I can tell you is that since this part here, you can either have it become a pocket or not, and I will show you an example in a moment, um, you want to give a little space here so that if you fill your envelope with content, like so, so this one is not pasted down or anything. So if you fill this, you want enough room here so that you can expand and actually fill this up, right? So I am going to take this and I am going to flip it up and I'm going to give myself about an eighth of an inch from here. So just an eighth, you can do a quarter of an inch. It's really up to you how much space you can do this and create an envelope that closes and you can have tags in here or a letter in here. It's really up to you how far down you wanna come. Ideally, you want your envelope to come up enough so that your tab, your top flap closes, right? And nothing shows, the content doesn't show. So I'm going to give this one about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more than an eighth of an inch, there we go, but definitely under a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my bone folder and again, make sure that everything is down. And these areas here, you don't worry about because we're gonna cover this up, okay? And there you have it. This is it. Now all you would have to do is Take some glue or you can take a glue stick, um, any glue will do down the sides, um, but we're not quite there yet, okay? And at that point you would have an envelope. All right, here we go, like that. So what I have done is I have taken the envelopes and I took some distress ink and it could be distress ink in any color. Um, to match whatever it is that you're going to, whatever paper line you're going to be working with. Which brings me to, I have a new digital collection out and you will be seeing a video soon on that new digital collection, but you guys get to see it here first because I will be working with the new digital collection to cover these envelopes. So like I said, you can use any type of distress ink or ink that you may have to ink all of the sides of your envelope before we lay down our paper, okay? Let me give you one more example of how we would do that. I'm gonna do this with the extra large bag, okay? So that you guys have another go on how to make it or rewind this. And if you have any questions, please, please leave it down below and I will come back and answer any questions that you may have. So again, the flat side of your envelope or the creaseless per se side of your envelope goes down where the envelope gusset is, you want to have that facing up. And this is a larger envelope, so you're gonna need maybe two hands to work with this. Um, you wanna open your bag up. And like I said, you want to start massaging the sides out. And then and you wanna make sure that you're massaging these areas. 
because the crease is there already, so it's kind of trained to go one way and you are training it to go the other way for you. So on this side, I'm just taking my thumb nail and I am pressing out. So basically, it's out, right? And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm pressing out right here and my sides and I'm working my sides. And generally, one side of the bag wants to do its own thing and the other side is perfect. Don't know why. Can't explain that. If there's a bag engineer out there, please chime in. I would appreciate it. I'm going to take the knitting needle in this case and I'm going to help it. And you see how that wants to crease in a funny way? I'm going to work that out of there if possible. Okay. Work that bag to your liking. And then same here, you want to work that out so that it doesn't crease. But if it does, it's okay. It's not. I think that the imperfections in this is what makes it beautiful in the end. Um, so I'm going to do that. <clears throat> and this little bag here wants to not play nice. There we go. There we go. And then you want to work with your bag. Just manipulate it. And again, if it has that crease, if it really bothers you, you can come in and try to fix that. And if not, I'm just going to let it be. I am going to, as I work on it some more, I'm going to let it be. Yeah. There we go. And as you can see, you can manipulate it to the best that you can. And then now I'm letting that go. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to crease my sides down. And I'm going to make sure now that I'm creasing everything as much as possible. And the more you crease it down, the flatter it gets. And depending on how you cover your paper bag, you can cover these. And I'll show you ways to do that. So this is my the back of the envelope, which will become the flap or the front here. So now we want to crease that down. And as you can see, there's a little crease there. You can always also take a, um, a needle and make a tiny little hole and push out if you want to do that. Okay. So if that bothers you, you can, you can definitely do that. You want to crease that top. Make sure everything is nicely placed down. And again, once more, flip it up. That's that's your flap right there. Or it could be this way or this way. You have many ways that you can work with this. And then as I said earlier, this you can bring down a little and have all of this extra space, which I think I'm going to do with this one. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and crease there. Now right here, I would make sure that my creases are nice and sharp. And there you have a larger envelope or a larger journal. You can make many of these and put them together. You can have them well, these are kind of the smaller ones, but here's an idea. You can have one like flipping out this way. You can attach this one and have it flip out this way, or you can attach it this way. And you can have this one flip in, top, back, pocket here. Okay. Many, many ways of working with this. Let me show you what I have come up with. So, I have three sizes to show you, and this is number one right here. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? And this is with my new digital paper line that's coming out soon. You guys have, um, you'll have first access to it if you're watching this video. And what I've done is I covered, I went ahead and I inked, as I said, all of my sides 
and here's like an imperfect perfection for me honestly it's imperfectly perfect um it just adds to it um looking aged this is the back this is from my neutrals collection which is in my etsy store right now back here um i've added little um flowers or excuse me um leaves from my neutrals collection here um and this is just gold cardstock and then what i've done is i've added a button with some um, german gloss glitter and i've taken some crochet thread and added these cute little beads at the end there and right here i have some trim and of course my beautiful paper line here in the back this is from the neutrals collection and this is from my new collection that you guys have access to today. And as you can see now, I've cut my paper so that I have a small edge here, okay? And I wanted it that way. I wanted it to seem imperfect and, you know, the little crinkles. It makes it look old and vintage, and I just love that. This is from my new paper collection, and here I've taken a stencil and I've added a cute rose right here. And then I have two pockets. And here are some leftovers from my paper collection that I've just added here, but you can add anything you like. Here I have purposely left the paper, the brown paper bag with no covering. And in the back, I covered it. So you have an idea of what it looks like if you want to add some paper there. And then here's like an old vintage receipt um that i just went ahead and distressed and i added back here but you can add really anything that you want inside of your envelope the sky's the limit and i've added this closure for it with a handmade button and i can teach you guys how to make those handmade buttons very very simple um so there's that one and then here is the bigger paper bag, the giant paper bag that I showed you earlier. So this one became this. Of course, this one I folded and gave myself more space. And with this one, it's up to the eighth of an inch mark inside. So I've added beautiful trim. This is the beautiful paper line. Look at that bird. It's so adorable. I'm just in love with this paper line. Um, I created this flower out of trim added a button and again it's this one is similar closure and I've added some beads at the end and it opens like so and this one is um, lengthwise right so we have a tall and skinny so you can use this really inside of as an insert inside of your junk journals or your, your journals you know I love the word junk journal but some of them are not really junky. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, so this is the um, paper line. As you can see, I cut the paper straight and that gave me that little beautiful um, outline here of the bag. And this bag worked nicely with me. So you can see there are no creases on the side on this one. And then this is part of my new paper line. As you can see, the trim is underneath here. And this is part of the new paper line as well. And then this is the back. And this is the, my new digital collection here as well. And then you can either, you can open this this way. You can make a tab here if you want to. Leave it alone if you want to. The sky's the limit with this, um, with um, this project. And in here, what I've done is I, as I said, I, this one I covered, and this one is a sheet from the Neutrals, which is on my Etsy store in there. And then I've taken this old, um, uh, what is this, it's a French receipt, and I've added one of my little tabs here, and I have kind of went ahead and I added the stress ink to the back, and I can put that in there. And in the back, 
on this one I took a um, circle punch and I added a little more of a there's already um, a punch out in the bag but I also punched it out myself um, to the digital paper and in the back here I have covered the back so before I put it in there, I went ahead and I distressed the edges of the digital paper before I put it, I pasted it down inside. And you do that before you close your envelope to make it easier for you. And again, there's a little tab so that you can pull that out. And here I have an old piece of leisure paper. And um, like I said, this is part of my new digital collection. And in the back, I kind of distressed and left this here so that you can write some notes. And that goes in the back pocket there, like so. And these guys are peeking through. Now let me show you the difference. So this one, let me take these out so that I can show you. So in this case, I went all the way up to the, I kind of butted it against the flap of the envelope, as you can see. So you can only barely see the tops of the documents that you may put in here. But as I showed you with the other paper bag, put this to the side, this one here, this one we've left a considerable amount of space here. So once we load this envelope up, you can actually see these back there and how stinking cute is that do you see that how beautiful that looks anyway so let me show you so before we get into actually let me show you this so here is I showed you this paper bag earlier let's see where is it the small white party bag like this and this will make an envelope that looks like this skinny one Again, this is part of the new digital collection. I've inked around the edges with, um, I believe it was Tattered Rose Distress Ink. And again, you have, in this case, because the bag, the paper bag is white, I just distressed the insides and left it alone. I didn't add any paper collection to that. Um, and again, you can use it this way or this way or even this way, it's really up to you. And what I do is, I will show you. This paper is from my, the Neutrals digital collection. And what I would do is it, I would go ahead and I would measure my paper to go inside of the envelope. And this is before you tack anything down. You want to go ahead and you want to measure. And it's up to you if you want to um, add paper all the way down to the crease or halfway, um, you know, up until there maybe, or all the way if you don't want people to look inside all the way. And the same thing here, you want to cover the inside. Once you have done all of that, once you have distressed all of your envelope and you've added your covers to it, um, what you want to do before you add your covers, I'm sorry, let's go back before you add your covers. You want to make sure that you adhere this part and let's go ahead and do that right now so I can show you. So you want this flap to be glued down and you can use, like I said, any type of glue you can use, you know, your art glitter glue, you can use your Fabri-Tac, Barely Arts, you can use a glue stick if you'd like. The sky's the limit. Whatever type of adhesive you enjoy using, I invite you to do that. And then, so what you wanna do is, in this case, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to glue this flap down. You don't even need a lot of adhesive. This, this project really does not use a lot of. It's very easy to make and very inexpensive. And I'm just going to pack that down. Just wanna make sure that it's all the way to the edge though.
all the way to the edge there. So before you do anything, this is what I would like for you to do. So make sure that your flap is down. And I'm gonna add a little glue there, but it's really not necessary because I'm gonna cover this with, here, just for those of you that that may bother you, just tack it down or not. Um, the easiest way for me to do this is for me to actually pick out an area of my paper that I want to use. So let me show you. So in this case, I want the back of my envelope. In this case, I think I want it to go like this, just up, up and down. No, I'm changing my mind. I'm gonna do it this way. So what I would like to do is, here is the new paper or digital collection. Cap my glue. There we go. And these are, this is what comes in the new digital collection. This beautiful, be oh my gosh, I'm just in love with it, you guys. It's just, look at this. So I'm going to decide which paper from this digital collection I want to be my focal point, right? So there are these elements here that you can fussy cut. There is so much. We have this neutral one that we can use for letters and just gorgeous, gorgeous paper. And as I said, this this one here I like to use in my in the inside of my envelope because it's so neutral. And like I said, it's part of the neutrals collection. So let me see. What do I want to use? I was thinking this way because I can use my. Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. It's not quite wide enough. Let's see. We're going to go this way. We're going to do this this way. And I believe I want to use this paper here to cover my envelope. The front, the front flap of my envelope will be this. And the back flap of my envelope will be this. Isn't this gorgeous, you guys? I'm so happy with this, the way I, this turned out. Um, let's see. Or, I can possibly use this as my front flap. And what I'm doing is I'm moving this around in the back so that I can see, kind of see where this would end up. And if I like this positioning of once I decide where, and you can hold this up to the light and it'll give you an idea of where your envelope is and the flaps and where everything would um, end up. So I believe that I like it there. So I'm going to turn this around like so. There's no uh, proper way per se to measure this.
something that looks like this, which is the outline of your envelope. And you will now take your paper cutter. And this is where I'm saying that measuring is helpful, but I, I really enjoy eyeballing this part because what I'm going to do now is, because I want a border of my paper bag to show, um, and I measured this, butting it up all the way to here, I now want to kind of guesstimate, kind of not, about a quarter of an inch from there. So I'm going to be cutting in a little bit, right? So in this case, I'm just going to, and then save all of these because they can definitely be used. And turn that around. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just gonna move, I have my line. I'm gonna move over about a quarter of an inch. There. And then this side, remember I, I had already gave it, given it the um, quarter of an inch and then here I'm going to move in. There. And again, this will, this will serve its purpose. Like you can use this for a snippet roll. Like for instance, you can add a bunch of snippets and grab these spools and have a beautiful little snippet roll out of something like this. It's just giving you ideas, and possibilities. And again, here is my diagonal and I'm going to move over Again, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little less and I can adjust, right? And then this one, we are going to cut, see, and save all of these little pieces for snippets. And here we are, and that's perfect for me. See that? Perfect. Oh my gosh, this is going to be beautiful. Okay, and then you're going to follow the same process. Now you have this and it may or may not work for your the inside. Um, in this case it doesn't, so you'll have to measure it um, because well, you could, it would work, but you have to take this one and use the template backwards on your paper so that you can flip it so that it works on here, okay? So now you have a template for the inside. You just have to remember that you have to flip it around in order for it to work. And now you can make a decision as to what you wanna cover the inside with. Now, because I am going to now want this to go this way or maybe like this so we have so here you have this front part of the flap which is perfect right you can now take this piece figure out what do you want to cover the inside part of your envelope with and what you want to do is you want to trace it with this part going this way. So say that, here, let me explain. Say I wanted to use these butterflies for the inside flap. Because this is this way, right? It's not a mirror image of the back. So what you wanna do is you wanna, here, the easiest way is to move it over, go here, and flip it so that it cuts the envelope perfectly, okay? Cuts the um, image that's going to go on the envelope perfectly. And now what you wanna do is you wanna transfer it over and you want the side that you want showing here up, okay? And then you're going to take the front flap and you're going to put it down. And you're going to figure out what area, you can do this against the light, but make sure that this is facing down, 
okay? And you want to kind of look into the light. That's the easiest way for me, unless you want to measure this. But again, I just want this to be super easy, easy and lay back, right? So then what I want to do is, I know that this is exactly where I want it to go. And then here, I would line this up. A little bit of the butterfly will not show, and I am okay with that. You wanna make sure that this is lined up perfectly. Because now you're not, this is going to be the perfect size, right? So we're not shrinking this in any way, shape, or form. Take your pencil, and this is where I said, if you are, well, if, if you're not steady with your hands, you can clip this, um, or you can do what I'm doing and live dangerously <laughs> and do this. And then here, this is where I would make like little lines, but I'm going to make a harsh line just so that you guys can see. But normally what I would do is make little hashes. So the impact is less on my paper. Since I'm using pencil, you can go ahead and have an eraser and just erase it. That's simple enough. I just, I want the least amount of damage on my, on my paper, but for purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and make kind of harsh lines so that you guys can see. Okay. And now this will fit perfectly here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut that. So I know that this is page number one. So I'm just gonna add a number one on there just to remind me that initially this is what I wanted for my page. And this would be number two. For my inside flap. And remember, we are now cutting on the line, okay? ahead and just cut on the line. If you want to conserve paper, you can, you know, go in there and kind of cut the diagonals out and you'll have that. But again, I'm, I'm not doing that today. We have this line here that I want to make sure that I am right on that line. Cut that out. Here's my little diagonal line for the side of my envelope and try to get it I kind of went over a little bit. I tried to get it as much as possible on that line. Go. And the side right there. And now you have the inside. Congratulations. We have the flap, you guys. So here we go. We have, um, sorry for cutting in front of you, but. Here we go, have the front of our envelope. How gorgeous is that? And then we have the inside of this beautiful, I'm gonna call it a garden envelope. How cute is that? And if you'd like, they're already numbered and it's okay, but if you want, so you can see the progress, you can just take a paper clip and clip it. How gorgeous is that? Now inside of here, as I said, I have a neutrals collection. Let's see, where are you? My neutrals collection have butterflies on it. You can put this in here if you want to, or you can keep and use the same paper collection, this, per this particular digital paper collection to put inside, to continue, right? Um, Here's a piece that was left over. You can use that inside, okay? Um, you can pick any of, the, any of the paper collection and use that inside. And then here, I think I want to use, let's see. What do I want to use on the inside? This is what was left over, so, and it fits almost perfectly here. So I think I want to do this one. And as you can see, 
On this one, I may have to remove about a quarter of an inch. Here, let me see. Let's go ahead and just let me show you my no measuring technique. no scratch that I'm going to go this way and the reason I want to go this way is because I want these elements to show so I am going to cut here and I am going to and I'm eyeballing about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to cut here okay I'll show you what that looks like I am sure those of you that love to measure and are my perfectionist crafty friends are probably going, eek, measure it. There we go. I'm just trying to show that it should be super low key, easy going, and just having fun, crafty friends, just fun, that's all. We just wanna have fun with our project. I'm gonna cut this a little, tiny little bit, like maybe an eighth of an inch to the right of my line. And because I feel like it's necessary. And if not, we just revisit our trimmer and trim it down, okay? But I feel like I did make the right choice Look at that, you guys. How beautiful is this when you open this? And of course, we still need this back part, but look at this. And you see, the reason I say that I like to use sheets from my neutral collection is because we don't have anything competing in the back, you see? Since this is so gorgeous already, See, we have nothing really competing back here. But yet we have elements of butterflies and beautiful doilies in the back, like so, right? Look at that. Oh my gosh, this makes my heart so happy. So happy. My little heart is happy, crafty friends. It's so beautiful. All right. And then here's that line. It's simple as taking your eraser and taking it off. Of course, we're going to ink all the way around. If if you like that, I, I enjoy inking. Um, so that's something that is for me. Then of course, we want to cover the back or not. You can leave it exposed. I believe that this is beautiful on its own, okay? And then you want to maybe cut, now you can measure this one and cut another piece for the inside part of here. And you'll have to measure it. That way it's perfectly in here. And right here you want to take a circle punch or not, it's up to you. I'm only doing it because there's already this um, notch here and cover the inside, right? And now, for the back part, we're going to basically do the same exact thing. If you want to measure, you can go ahead and grab a ruler. You can go ahead and measure. In this case, we have, we have five and seven eighths by 10 inches exactly. So in this case, we're going to take, where are you? This is so gorgeous. And we can measure. We can go ahead and shorten that by a quarter inch and we can measure, or you can use the technique that I showed you earlier. You can hold it against the light, figure out where that looks perfect to you line it up 
and cut. So for me, this is where it looks perfect. And I'm going to use my ruled background here to kind of figure out where it is looking straight so that we don't have, you know, a lopsided image. Here we go. And you can go ahead and I'm just going to make the little lines right now, like so. Take a look at it again. Make sure that it's lining up and that that's exactly where I want to position it. Or you can go ahead and measure, right, and figure out exactly where you want it. So in this case, I'm going to continue with my reckless behavior. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who like to measure, this is reckless behavior. And I have my line here, but I have to remember that I want to give myself about a quarter inch. It's up to you. You can do an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. It's really whatever you'd like. You could bring it all the way to the end. It is completely up to you. I'm going to hit and cut. And look at this, how beautiful this little sheet of paper. You can use this like washi. There's so many things, tags, so many things that you can do with these leftover pieces, crafty friends. And again, I want to give my allowance here. One more time, give myself a, an allowance on the side here and cut that. And let's see, oh my gosh, I love these reveals. <gasps> how gorgeous, oh my gosh. Look at this, look at this. And even if you just, I'm just going to go ahead right now, I'm going to make something with it right now. Just, I just can't help myself, look how, I love this paper collection. I'm so happy with it. Look at this, you guys, look at that. So gorgeous. This can go in your journal. It could be like a pocket at the bottom of your journal. Let me use this bag as a an example. You can, wrap it around look at that as a pocket you can just take that and use it as a tuck on either side um you can make a hole up here and adhere it to itself and make a tag how beautiful how beautiful all right okay excitement to the side like i said my my heart is so full right now because i'm just in love with this paper collection again see how i put it on the line you want to move over in about a quarter of an inch and then look we have this leftover isn't this gorgeous oh my gosh so many you can use this as tape you can use so many different ways that you can use your leftover pieces beautiful how gorgeous how gorgeous now if you'd like you can move it up so that you can have more of this border at the bottom I may do that later I didn't realize that I didn't pay attention to that when I was cutting but nonetheless it is gorgeous you guys look at this look at this crafty friends how beautiful is the back how beautiful is that? And here's this part here. And of course, as I showed you earlier, now you're gonna add these elements inside, right? How gorgeous, how gorgeous. And you have little areas to tuck things away. Another idea is I haven't done it yet, I'm thinking about doing it in the future, is that I can also notch this and create this into a pocket as well. Now, because it is a paper bag, these areas are a little flimsy, so I don't know how uh, the durability of that, but I think, I feel like that's something that you can do, right? Um, also, let me show you within this envelope, the more you handle it, the more tattered the top of your bag becomes, adding to the patina and beautifulness of these envelopes. 
So hi everyone, we're back and I am going to now put together the envelope and um, so I'm going to play some music so not to bore you through this part and um, put everything together. I've cut all of my pieces that I want inside and I'm going to show you how to um, make this, beautify this even more at this point. Um, I did talk about my um, handmade um, buttons. I'm going to be using this one in this case and I'll show you the process on how I attach these buttons on here um, through this process. Um, let me see, I put together some tags. I also um, made this into a tag that we've talked about earlier. So as you saw, um, this was one long sheet and I kind of folded it. And this is out of the new digital line, digital collection. And you can make these tags out of that. I possibly will use this as well. So um, let me get to it.
Welcome back crafty friends. So I know that this video is a little longer than you are used to from me, but I wanted to make sure that all of you had the opportunity to see the process of me making this charming envelope out of a simple lunch bag. So let me show you the finished product. And this is what it looks like. And I could not be happier with how this has turned out. One of the things that I did not show you how to make were these buttons. Uh, these are handmade and they're German glass glitter on the top. If you are interested in um, knowing how to make these, please let me know down below. I also added these um, beautiful glass glitter um, butterflies and they're, they're just punched out with glass glitter on top. Here, I didn't add too much to the front of my envelope because I believe that the new Spring Serenade Digital Collection is delightfully charming on its own. So it really didn't need much more other than adding these cute little butterflies. As my closure, I used, or for the closure, I used um, crochet ribbon and I've added these beads to it, a dangle from there. And of course it's, you know, it goes around your button and it opens like so. So I'm going to go ahead and reveal what the envelope looks like. In this case, I am using the envelope going in this direction. And let me show you the back. This is what the back looks like. It is just so alluring to me. I just love the way that this turned out. So let me go ahead and open it and show you the inside. So this is what the inside looks like. And it's a little busy. It is up to you how you want to use this if you want to copy this and make sure you tag me if you um, decide that you want to um, create one just like this. I'd love to see it. Any anyone that you create with the um, digital collection, I would love for you to tag me and I would love to see all of your lovely projects. Um, in this case, let me show you the back. So in the back here, this particular piece of the um, digital collection has this bottom part where you can decide to add it like I did here. Or if you want to, you can cut this out and use it as washi, as a border there. It's very versatile. So what I did was with one of the sheets, I went ahead and I cut it down. And as you can see, I have a very small, I think it's half an inch here. And I've made this pocket here for tickets. You can add whatever you wish here. You can make a bigger pocket if you'd like. I wanted to showcase, of course, the digital collection. So therefore, I made a small little um, sliver of the um, paper here, and I've added these tickets right there. Right over here, this flipped over, I have this tucked in here, so it's just a tag. I showed you this while I was putting everything together that we had a, um, let's see, I'm gonna tell you right now, it was about an inch and three quarters wide um, sliver of paper left and I just folded it and it became a tag and what I did was then I took a beautiful embossing folder and I um, went ahead and I cut a piece and I added it here and I'll take this out so you can see and it's a tag and the tag I decided to put this on the side just cute little numbers and cute little flower and in the back it looks like so and it's being held by a paper clip. And then this comes in the digital collection as well. This is um, uh, one of the pages that you can go ahead and fussy cut. And I did that, made this tag, and I added again some an embossing folder to here and then some book paper in the back. You can um, use blank paper, anything you'd like in the back. You can um, go ahead and use this for journaling in the back. The sky is the limit um, as to what you can add there and I just tucked it in here to the side. And then the content is, so if you remember in the beginning, I had um, other envelopes that I'll show you in a moment where I folded all the way to the top. This one I folded about a quarter of the way up my envelope so that now I have an area to put letters or postcards. So in this case, here's like a postcard that I put in there and I have some uh, linen cotton blend paper on the back for that and then 
here, these are um, little um, page dividers that I've added just so that, you know, we can give some separation as to what's inside of our envelope. And this is part of the paper collection. Let me put that back in there. So and these come in and out very easily. There's tutorials out there on how to make this. Um, so this is a ledger paper and I backed it with please take a look at the um, digital collection it's up now on my Etsy it's beautiful um, and like I said it is called spring serenade and I, I just I am in love with it so one of the pockets here I put this one in there so we have two pockets and I've lined the pocket this one will go in there and then and you can adhere these I'm not adhering it yet because I'm not fully committing to this is what's going to end up in this one um, but here we go and go ahead and just put that in there and the, for the most part it stays it's it's just that if you're going to use it to pull something out you definitely need to adhere it and I have just um, went ahead and I used um, distressed ink and I distressed all of this and that one I put in my back pocket, which is very easily tucks away in there. You can tuck up many things in here. Um, this would be great for um, happy mail to someone. I would love to receive something like this in the mail. It's just gorgeous. So this is what I came up with for this envelope. And let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and close it. And this one as well has um, some beads. And here we go, I showed you the beads there. And then we have the small paper bag. So this is made out of a jumbo paper bag. This is made out of a small paper bag and I showed you this earlier, but here we go. Let me go ahead and open that for you. And this is crochet um, string that's there. And this one opens like this. Like I said, this one is my neutrals paper collection. You can find that on Etsy as well. And this is what the back looks like. And then we have in here, I have like an old ledger paper. And then you have another pocket. And in here I have little pieces from the digital collection. And again, this button was also made using the um, German glass litter. Here is, again, this is from the Spring Serenade digital collection, and I added these beads right here. I've added some, a um, trim uh, flower, and this one opens in the same manner. In this case, I've added trim going all the way around. this bird this is what the back looks like and when we open this one I've left it blank so that I can give well, not blank per se but I didn't add any pockets or anything on the side or it so that you can see how versatile this is you can use it in many different ways and in this case here I have many little things that I've tucked in here so I grabbed some old ledger paper that I had and again, from a sliver of the digital collection that was left over, I, um, of course, I distressed the ledger paper. I added this um, leftover piece of embossed paper. I've added this, a little bit of the, um, the trim uh, or washi at the end of one of the um, digital collection papers. And I've left the back blank so that I can journal in there. And then I have this really pretty, um, again, this was half of a sheet that I used in one of the other envelopes. And what I've done here is I've created a small little pocket back here. Um, and I've added, this is part of the digital collection that's left over. There's a stamp and there's a couple of trim samples that I've added in there. This is part of the um, um, fussy cut paper that's included in the collection and I've made a pocket out of it. And this is a piece of embossed paper from the embossed paper. 
paper, I made this tag and I added this little bolt right there. And some sorry trim. And then this is another sliver of the uh, paper collection. One more thing. So out of the digital paper collection, I've made this envelope. So it's a handmade envelope. And again, this is just a, um, a die cut of a piece of the embossed paper that I've added here. And I went ahead and I distressed all of the sides. And I have a faux um, wax seal here and it is usable. So if you'd like to see how to make this envelope, please let me know. And then you can open it up and it's, as you can see, it's part of the digital collection and it's just folded so that you can go ahead and put your secrets in the secret letter, right? That's hidden inside of your envelope. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you are welcome to um, use this standalone or you can use it so that it flips out. If you'd like to see that, please let me know and I can put a video together on how to use it in that way. Um, as you can see, I did notch my paper out a little bit here so that you can pull. If you'd like, you can notch this area as well. Um, the sky is the limit. And there you have it, crafty friends. This is very easy to put together lunch bag envelopes that you can make just stand alone as i said and send it in happy mail or put it inside of your journals or you can make a journal out of it really you have it's so versatile and as i said it can be used vertically or horizontally you can it's it's just an amazing way easy way to make something out of nothing truly um, you can get more elaborate with this i tried to keep it uh, minimalistic to a certain extent because i would like for my new subscribers that may be new to journaling um, or junk journaling being able to um, create one for themselves easily so i want to thank you so much for um, staying till the end i know that this is a long video let me know if you have any questions down below I am always here to try to help you harness your creativity and don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe and smash the notification bell to keep you updated.